गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स टूडे वी विल डिस्कस द लास्ट पार्ट ऑफ वीवर्स आर एन स्मेल्टर्स एंड फैक्ट्री ओनर्स दैट इज द सेवन चैप्टर ऑफ एट्थ क्लास हिस्ट्री बुक वीवर्स आर एन स्मेल्टर्स एंड फैक्ट्री ओनर्स In our previous videos, we have discussed about the words which tell us histories like bandhna, chains, uh, muslin, and uh, calico also. And after it, we have also discussed about Indian textiles in European market and cotton mills come up uh, in India. So basically, today we will discuss about the sword of Tipu Sultan and wood steel. That is the last part of our uh, chapter, the sword of Tipu Sultan and wood steel. Basically, in this video. at first we will discuss about the sword of tipu sultan and wood steel after it we will discuss about the abandoned furnaces in villages later on we will uh, later on we will discuss about iron and steel factories come up in india and in this paragraph we will discuss about tesco tata iron and steel company so let me discuss the very first uh, uh, part of this uh, video that is the that is related the sword of tipu sultan and wood steel this is tipu sultan sword that was made in late 18th century Look at this uh, sword written with gold on the uh, on the steel handle of Tipu sword were quotations from the Quran these were the quotations which were taken from Quran with message about victories in war quotations from Quran and which are related to victories in war Look at this tiger head towards the bottom of the handle As you know Tipu Sultan is also known uh, Tipu Sultan was also known as the tiger of Mysore. We begin the story of Indian steel and iron by reminding the famous story of Tipu Sultan who ruled Mysore till 1799. He fought four wars with the British and died fighting with his sword in his hand. Tipu's legendary sword are now a part of valuable collections in museum in England. But now the question arises why the sword was so special the sword had an incredibly hard and sharp edge that could easily rip through the opponent's armor this quality of sword came from a special type of high carbon steel called woods and which was produced all over south india woods steel when made into swords produced a very sharp edge with a flowing water pattern This pattern came from very small carbon crystals and embedded in the iron. Basically this sword of Tipu Sultan was made from wood steel. Wood steel high carbon steel which contains very small carbon crystals. Now we will see the process of making wood steel. Francis Buchanan who toured through Mysore in 1800 a year after Tipu Sultan's death has left us an account of the technique by which wood steel was produced in many hundreds of smelting furnaces in Mysore in these furnaces iron was mixed with charcoal and put inside small clay pots through an integrated control of temperature the smelters produced steel in goods that were used for sword making not just in india but in west and central asia too basically in the furnaces iron ore was mixed with charcoal and these are put into inside a small clay pots now the question arises what is woods 
This is anglicized version of Kannad word ukku, Telugu word hukku and Tamil and Malayalam word urukku that means steam woods. Anglicized version of Kannad word Kannad Ukku Telugu word Hukku and Tamil and Malayalam word Urukku and the meaning of all these three words is steel. Steel. Michael Faraday, the legendary scientist and a discoverer of electricity and electromagnetism, spent four years studying the properties of Indian woods. However, the woods steel making process, which was so widely known in South India, was completely lost by the mid 19th century. Can you guys why this was so? There were so reasons, uh, there were many reasons behind it. Like the very first reason was actually the sword and armor making industry died with the conquest of India by the British and imports of iron and steel from England displaced the iron and steel demanded by uh, de um, sorry uh, imports of iron and steel from England displaced the iron and steel produced by craftsperson in India. The second thing Production of wood steel required a highly specialized technique of refining iron. But iron smelting in India was extremely common till the end of the 19th century. We will see how the uh, smelting process was uh, done in India in 19th century. That is related to our second topic, abandoned furnaces and villages. As I have told you earlier, production of wood steel required a highly specialized technique of refining iron. But it was uh, uh, very common in India till the 19th century. In Bihar and Central India, in particular, every district had smelters that used local deposits of ore to produce iron and which was widely used for manufacture of implements and tools of daily use. The furnaces were most often built of clay and sun-dried bricks. The smelting was done by men while women worked the bellows. What do you mean by bellows? Actually, bellows is a device or equipment that can pump air and that is used to pump air in furnaces that kept the charcoal burning. By the late 19th century, however, the craft of iron smelting was in decline. In most villages, furnaces fell into disuse and the amount of iron produced came down. Why was this so? Like what was happened in late 19th century? Because of uh, this, the iron smelting was in decline in countryside. The very first reason behind it was the new forest laws. According to which trees were, according to which forest area was divided into three parts. Protected forest, reserve forest and village forest. When the colonial government prevented people from entering the reserved forest, how could the iron smelters find wood for charcoal? Where could they get iron ore? Defying forest laws, they often entered the forest secretly and collected wood, but they could not sustain their occupation on this basis for long. Many gave up their craft and looked for other means of livelihood also. In some areas, the government did grant access to the forest but the iron smelters had to pay a very high tax to the forest department for every furnace they used. This reduced their income and the last thing by the late 18th century by the late 19th century iron and steel was being imported from Britain and iron smiths in India began using the imported iron to manufacture utensils and implements. This inevitably lowered the demand for iron produced by local smelters. That's why the process was declined. The occupations of iron smelters was declined in late 19th century. By the early 20th century, the artisans producing iron and steel faced a new competition with British iron and steel industries. Abandoned furnaces and villages.
इन विलेजेस न्यू टेक्निक्स और वीकेंड से हाईली स्पेशलाइज टेक्निक्स वर नॉट यूज वर नॉट यूज द सेकेंड थिंग दिस वॉज कॉमन इन बिहार एंड सेंट्रल इंडिया एंड हाउ द प्रोसेस वॉज डन लाइक स्मेल्टर्स यूज लोकल ओर डिपोजिट वेयर इज वीमेन पंप द एयर बाय बेलोज पंपिंग द वर्क ऑफ पंपिंग एयर वॉज डन बाय वीमेन विद द हेल्प ऑफ बेलोज a device that can pump air in late 19th century this was also declined late 19th century reasons why the occupation or we can say why the process of uh, local iron smelting was declined the very first reason which i have discussed is new forest laws which were introduced in india by britishers and according to this new forest laws forest were divided into three parts reserve forest protected forest and village forest in protected and reserve forest the movements of local uh, community was not allowed so when the movement was not allowed so how could uh, then how could they get wood how could they get iron ore deposit and how could they get minerals if they entered the forest secretly and collectively woods so it could not then it could not uh, uh, be continued long for longer period that's why many gave up their craft and looked for other means of livelihood the second thing iron smelters had to pay high taxes they had to pay high taxes for the furnaces which were used by them and the third thing the demand of indian iron and steel was declined as i have told you earlier why this demand was declined because uh, iron smiths in india began using the imported iron to manufacture utensils and implements now we will see the last part of this chapter and this video also that is iron and steel factories come up in india basically in this paragraph we will discuss about only tesco the year was 1904 and it was the hot month of april charles wald an american geologist and dorab ji tata the eldest son of jamshed ji tata were traveling in chatisgarh in search of iron ore deposits they had spent many months on a costly venture looking for sources of good iron ore to set up a modern iron and steel plant in india jamshed ji tata had decided to spend a large part of his fortune to build a big iron and steel industry in india but this could not be done without identifying the source of fine quality iron ore one day when they were traveling in the forest wild and dorab ji tata they came upon a small village and uh, they found a group of men and women carrying basket loads of iron ore these people were agarias agarias was a local community in chatisgarh and they asked agarias where they had founded the iron ore the agarias pointed to a hill in the distance and this hill was rajhara hills when wild and torab ji reached the hill reached to a hill after an exhausting trek through dense forest and on exploring the hill the geologist charles wald declared that they had at last found what they had been looking for it means the sources of good iron ore they have got the sources of good iron ore in rajhara hills but there was a problem the reason was dry and water necessary for running the factory and this was not to be found nearby so tata's jamshed ji tata and dorab ji tata 
had to continue their search for a more suitable place to set up their factory however the agarias helped in the discovery of the source of iron ore that would later supply to the bhilai steel plant also after a few years a large area of forest was cleared on the banks of the river subarnarekha to set up the factory and industrial township jamshedpur here there was water near iron ore deposits and the tata iron and steel company tisco that came up began producing steel in 1912 tisco was set up at an opportune time why this was set like tisco was set up at an opportune time as i have told you all through the 19th century late 19th century india was is importing steel that was manufactured in britain expansion of the railways in india had provided a huge market for rails that britain produced for a long while british experts in the indian railways were unwilling to believe that good quality steel could be produced in india but by the time tisco was set up the situation was changed completely in 1914 the first world war broke out steel produced in britain now had to meet the demands of war in europe the industries of britain were indulged were busy in making weapons and armor so imports of british steel into india declined dramatically and the indian railways turned to tisco for supply of rails as the war dragged on for several years for four years tisco had to produce produce shells and carriage wheels for the war and by 1919 the colonial government was buying 90% of the steel manufactured by tisco over time tisco became the biggest steel industry within the british empire in the case of iron and steel as in the case of cotton textiles industrial expansion occurred only when british imports into india declined and the market for indian industrial good increased This happened during the First World War and after as the nationalist movement developed and the industrialist class become became stronger the demand for the government protection became louder struggling to retain its control over India the british government had to concede many of these demands in the last decade of colonial rule so basically in this chapter we have discussed about the lives of weavers and iron smelters in india during colonial rule and in ancient times also when britishers were not dominating indian market and european market also and we have also discussed the situation of weavers and iron smelters after the domination of britishers not only in indian market but in the world market also but the situations kept on changing as the, we can see at the time of first world war second world war and the nationalist movement also